Right, so this is some footage from fellow YouTuber Triathlon Dan. Now, this is the Beeston CC hill climb race. So this is the course, hilly-ish, not crazy. 350 normalized from Dan, pretty big. But we're going to go through some mistakes. So this is mistake number one. Uh, now, basically, like, the neutral car is there. He's just doing, like, 400 watts for no reason. Everyone else is behind him. His teammate is, like, off the front. But, like, in reality, it's kind of not achieving much because he's basically just wasting loads of energy. People behind him. Yeah, okay, his teammate is, like, maybe ahead of him. But he's doing 470 watts here. This is not useful. Like, just get on the car and draft or just bin this off. Like, this is just no point doing this, in my opinion. Um, it achieves nothing. The chance of a first, you know, first attack uh, going slim. Okay, I always try it sometimes. Funny. But ultimately, this is just so many watts. Um, Dan is pretty big, so his threshold is fat. But at the same time, you know, if you're cracking out 450 here, you're just spiking your heart rate. It's up to 163. Um, so anyway, we're going to skip ahead a little bit to Dan's first attack. So his teammate is this guy on the front here in the black kit. Um, and their kind of goal was, it was a hilly-ish course. Dan was like, my goal was to get in the break, uh, effectively, or his teammate and try and help as much as he can. So this is a corner. He comes around with some speed. I would say 600 watts, not 400 watts, because the guy's still on his wheel. Um, he then gaps this guy big time in the corner. Lad behind, cannot corner clearly. And then out the corner, he whacks it, which is good. Um, I just think he should have whacked it more into the corner. Now here is okay. You can see in the rear camera, the top right, there's actually quite a lot of like people being strung out. What I think here though is like flick your elbow, get the guy to come through straight away. This bit here, the guy behind him, you can see he's looking around. He's not pedaling much. You can see from the way the way he's riding. So Dan here needs to look around, see this guy ahead of him, flick his elbow straight away because doing 440 at 50k an hour, the guy's, the guy's going to be able to sit on pretty easy. This guy comes around because they do actually have someone, which is good. And I think that goes to show that, Dan, you you got to flick your elbow. Because if people come around you, that means it's not that hard. So, you know, and you're just wasting energy here. So flick your elbow, get people to come around, try and get it to work. Uh, but obviously, it is hard to get things to work in a 3-4 because everyone likes to attack. And then people don't always have the gas to follow through on things. Um, and here, sitting in third wheel, it's actually all right. I wouldn't really criticize too much what he's doing now. Um, you know, it's kind of standard, uh, try and be near the front. I think sometimes positioning, if you get too far to the front, people come behind you, sitting third wheel, fourth wheel, I'm guilty of a lot, can happen. Anyway, we're going to skip forward a little bit more because there's some more attacks going on. Um, people are looking around, people are like uh, a bit confused. Dan decides it's time to go. Again, I don't think this was the worst move. I just think more gas required. You can see the guy behind him on the wheel is enjoying life a lot because he's behind Dan. Um, you can see he did take quite a lot of speed over. And I think now flick your elbow straight away. There's no point now. Like the guy behind you has not done a big effort. You should look around, know the race situation, flick your elbow. He kind of looks like he does because that guy nods his head or shakes his head. But here, again, it's like if you're doing sub 300 watts, like what you like, you, and if you're off the front, it's kind of useless. Like if this guy's not going to work, just bin it off because, you, you, you know, you're not going to be able to ride. If this guy can't pull a turn now, he's going to be useless for you. So I think ultimately, again, I would say bin this attack off um or swing over violently so the guy actually has to come through you can see the guys chased it back so kind of a wasted effort again um not really his fault as much because the guy behind him just didn't pull but i think you know you just got to not commit um and then you know when it comes back together this is always a good time to go even if you've just gone and you can see on the right hand side behind you people are already going past with big speed and this is the issue if you sit front wheel that guy comes past you've got to have a big snap and damn being a triathlete not the biggest snap in the world you can see again that guy slingshotting behind big gas big gas and i think this is the issue the, the counter goes but then dan's on the front doing 800 watts and then everyone can just be in his draft so again it's just kind of small stuff one thing dan does really well though is getting into the bottom of the climb this is kind of the hilly course and definitely like dan uh, was saying to me there's like it's kind of stress that he might he, uh, might get spat on this climb so being near the front is obviously good because you just got more sliding room you can see here the gradient is wrong obviously they're not going 21 mile an hour zero percent uh from what i could tell it was like 900 meters uh Sorry, there was bits at 9% for a couple hundred meters. It wasn't like a mega crazy course uh, in terms of bergs, but it was like enough that um, if you got some gas, people get excited. And again, if you start at the front, people just sprint over the top. But like, unless the people are going from here, you just know it won't stick because it's just not hard enough. So this guy on the right goes, but like he's not really attacking. So no need to stress. And I think Dan does very well here by just riding 560, 600 watts um, up this climb. And then he knows that that's sustainable, but also that that's like quick enough. You're not going to lose that much. You can see all these people coming around. Uh, again, it's quite easy to do if you're, especially if you kind of think you're a bit of a climber. It's like moving up on the climb. 
it's not always that useful. Like you can move up, but it's just kind of wasted energy. And actually what Dan's doing here, even if you're good at climbing, is actually a good idea because you just save so much energy. Look, he's lost like 30 positions, which, okay, you have to make back. But in three, four racing, it's pretty easy to, to move up. And he's just saved so much energy. Um, and over the top here, you know, you just got to accelerate a little bit. You're in the draft. Like you think the whole time he's in the draft, people come around him. So again, this is actually a big brain move. Um, I think you can almost go the opposite sometimes. And if you're a stronger rider, attacking to the bottom of the climbs can be a good idea as well. Um, just because, uh, you know, it gives you even more slipping room. Um, and sometimes if climbers bridge up to you. Anyway, here is actually where the race winning move goes, I believe. It's kind of hard to see. I couldn't exactly see it, but I'm pretty sure these people up the road are the people who get in the race winning move, which was one of Dan's teammates. Now, we're going to go be a little bit critical on this because I think, optimally, you should always try and have a lot of people. So Dan here does actually attack. So maybe his teammate isn't up the road, but at this point around the, the gaps go. And again, I think Dan here, just the watts are too low. He's got to attack and just hold five, 600 watts for as long as he can. Like, you know he can hold 600 watts, right? We've just seen on the climb. So I think here, don't do this 430 stuff. You need to get across because as soon as you get across, then that group's working. And then obviously like, it's even harder for the bunch to go. But now, Dan is just a carrot for the bunch. They can see him out there. He's like 30 meters away. He's making progress to the break, but the guys behind him are like, okay, well, if I bridge to him and then we bridge to the break, it's going to go. Well, if he just whacked that six, 700 watts to get massive gaps straight away and then settled in, um, you know, then, then the bunch is like, well, this guy's just an animal. I can't catch him. So I do think sometimes, you know, if you're going to bridge a gap, I always go, you know, you want to just accelerate so hard um, and keep the speed as long as you can and then kind of admit that the last bit will be a bit grim, but at least you'll be closer um, and discourage me because now like they they've caught him uh and you know this is kind of it um i think one of his teammates this is when they go um it's kind of always hard to tell in these races because you watch it and then you're like um you can't always see because the gopro footage is like quite far down um but again like you can see here it's definitely hard so anyway now the break's gone this is where i think dan is like this this guy ahead of him his teammates also in the break but here he's second wheel this is pointless in my opinion what you should be doing if your teammates out the road and you only got one of them Okay, he said he was the strongest guy, but it's still, like, one is not that good. You want to be greedy in these situations. That's what Max, when I was racing with him in Albania, he was like, you need to be greedy. You want to have as many people as you can in the break, which I think is a really good point. And this guy attacks here, and Dan's got zero chance. And he's his teammate. Uh, I think this actually could be when they go. Um, and those guys go, right? But you just, you like, now he's like, here, it's like, well, you've got to be following these attacks. Because if you're not following them, you're only going to have one in the front group. So... In my opinion, you always want to just have as many as you can. So this bit here, I actually think, is when the race move goes. So you've just seen it. Top qual editing from myself. And him and his teammate are now blocking the road. Which I don't think is too bad, blocking the road now. But I do think, you know, in this race, if I was Dan, I'd want to have an opportunity myself. And I'd be going with these people and going like, right, I'm going to, like he does. But instead of going straight away, um, you know, from the front and dragging everyone with him, if you're like maybe fifth, sixth wheel you can actually go and snap this elastic. thing. Now he's just riding at 560 watts, and that's just tough. It doesn't matter how good you are, 5, 600 watts is tough. Um, so, yeah, I don't think this was good. And to be fair, like, okay, yeah, he stopped these guys getting to the break, so in that sense, well, job well done. But I do think you need to be more greedy in these situations, and what you really need to do is just make sure that you have as many people in the front group as possible, and you even if the break's gone you want to try and get there because in these races it's incredibly unpredictable and you just don't know what's going to happen uh which could be some foreshadowing because basically his teammate does get dropped from the break and you can see here like these guys aren't bringing it back right so there's no need to be like third wheel here because look on the right who's coming up that's where the attack's coming and in the uk if it's lined out on the left people are going to attack on the right so all you do is keep your head on a swivel sit a little bit far back and just follow them you can even help them because the thing is even if you bring one lab with them, if you've then got numerical superiority, it's just so good in the break. So I really do think people often underestimate this. And I've seen teams and Nat Bs have six riders, they get one in the break and they give up and they go, oh, okay, we're done. And they just mark it. And then that guy doesn't get a good result. So you really need to stack breakaways. And I think that's what people don't. Anyway, his teammate gets brought back, um, which is not good. Uh, Dan here is now moving up. And he whacks in an attack. And this is actually probably, I reckon, Dan's best attack of the day by quite a long way. He catches everyone by surprise. Uh, his teammate's been dropped, so they actually real big panic. You know, huge panic. And again here, I do think sometimes he settles down a little bit too easily. I think, you know, the lad is a bigger threshold. He's got 400 watts. He should be doing like 450 here. Real stretching out and then settling later. Because now, 
he's still a little bit too close and people are going to try and get him. And I do think it's a bold move here, trying to bridge across. But sometimes you just got to go for it, innit? You just got to hope for the best. You know, it's all God's plan in the end if you're going to get across. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't. Uh, and then basically he's just working for the rest of the race. There's not too much really to show after that. It's just kind of the work um, required. And then they don't bring him back because obviously in the 3-4, you just never bring people back. But you can see here there's like motivated people. Like there's those two Halzone guys like who probably should be working to bring it back. So I don't know if I don't think they have anyone to break. Um, but again, like just like why would you ride? I mean, I would never ride uh, when the brake's gone. You just got to tack across to it. So, you know, I think if I was down you know you can either do that or I, what i do is i'd absolutely light it into the bottom of the climb and then let his guy who got dropped on break if he's still strong uh attack on the climb uh to try and get away and you know if you drill it really hard at the bottom it means there could be a selection you might have three or four and then they can bridge across because once you've got you know three or four people it's it's okay to bridge across but anyway these are just my thoughts about the race i think in general it was decent um i think you know there's a couple of mistakes but who doesn't make mistakes racing and i think it's easy to watch races and go oh you did this wrong you did that wrong but in reality i don't think i've ever done a single race where there haven't been millions of mistakes uh, that i've made um just sometimes you get away with them sometimes you don't uh but anyway cheers for watching hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one